Hey, here we are, uh, the beginning of uh, hashtag MSC TV. I'm so glad um, some of you are out there. Um, hey, Freedom, <laughs> good to see you. I know we have other friends uh, jumping in here soon. And um, I have an incredible guest this evening. We have both... Uh, uh, chatted a little bit earlier, and I think we have some fun stuff coming your way. Oh, there he is. Let's see. Bring in our guest here. <clears throat> Introducing to uh, to our show. Here we go. We've got Mr. Charlie Price. Oh, I love Hello. it. Hi. I oh, love yeah. the wardrobe change as well. Thank you. <laughs> it's beautiful. So um, just real quickly, I just want to set up for everyone what this is all about. This is about talking to people within our community and um, not really getting depressed mode, if you will, old 80s reference uh, to Depeche mode, but rather just, um, you know, just being ourselves and talking about things that inspire and make us happy. And I think that begins with talking to people who inspire us. So. Charlie, you have always inspired me, and um, we're so glad you're here. And I'm so glad you've joined me in a glass of wine <laughs> as well. Oh, so, we, you know, we have this or that at the end we play. Cheers. And, um, and in this or that, I forgot to ask red or white. So are you a white wine person, Charlie? Yes, I'm white trash, you know. I, I like my Chardonnay. <laughs> Chardonnay. <laughs> I'm gonna remember the Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing a cab this evening, so yes, yes. and I, I just recently um, got into red wine, and I upset everyone in a restaurant when I say I'm looking for a red that's sort of dusty and tastes like a band aid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah, I'll get right on that. <laughs> I love red wine too. I, I yeah. love wine, so. Yeah, I mean, so a couple of winos here, but not endorsing drinking in any way. I um, have <laughs> have a tea, have a coffee, have me, whatever. So, what 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 we want to do here, Charlie, is just <clears throat> be you know candid and open. And I don't think you know any other way. You are one of the most purely honest people oh. um, I've ever met, and I think that's what's so special about you. Beyond being talented, you know, I've seen you be you know political when maybe other people won't. I've seen you just be pure Charlie, but what I want to do is go back to little Charlie. I want to go back to the beginning and say, when did you know, when did you get that feeling that, that being a stylist, and I know this might seem like a cliche question, but like for me, it was, I was five years old. Other boys were playing in the dirt, wanted tanks and trucks and guns and things like that. And for me, I was teasing my Nana's hair and mm -hmm. painting her nails. Did, awesome. you, did you did you have any kind of moment like that when you were young where you were I like, did. okay. <laughs> I did. I mean, I'm tempted to say that it was my first prison rape, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> it was actually when I used to go with my dad had beautiful hair, which is weird because I'm bald. But um, <clears throat> he was not my biological father. It's a long story. I had beautiful hair. And we would always go to get our haircuts. And actually, I had pretty hair at the time, too. So we would all get our hair cut. It was kind of a thing that we did. And I would always sit and wait for him and look at the books in the, and look at like the work of people that I later found out were like Robert Lobetta or Anthony Muscolo. Or wow. And I was just completely absorbed in those books. And I didn't even really want to get my hair cut anyway. I just loved it so much. I loved being in the salon. I loved the gay men in the salon. I loved the hot ladies in the salon. I loved the, what the people were getting done, the way it smelled. Um, yeah, so I knew, I mean, I sort of knew, but didn't know that I wanted to be a hairdresser from that, for sure. I was definitely intoxicated by it. Yeah, it was like, and we're similar ages, maybe we'll share, maybe we won't, but I, yeah. I, I too, there was something so inviting about the smell of a perm and nail polish mm -hmm. and hairspray and like, it, makes and you high. it was like, mm -hmm, I like. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I love that you touched on all the senses. Now, I, I'm hoping you can share this because it was it, it was fun when you told me about how you got into the editorial world and and, and how how that all happened. And I I'm, I'm alluding to what happened in New York. And, and I 
I remember you as that eager kid, mm. just ready to do everything. And it might have involved one of the greatest uh, runway fashion mm. week hairdressers on the planet. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think people are often wondering, how can I be like a Charlie Price? How can I break in and get into doing fashion shows and doing editorial? What was that big break? And I think you know what I'm talking about, right? I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I uh, I worked for um, my. I guess my big break would be when I worked in Milan with Eugene Solomon at Prada and Dolce and Gabbana when I was an Aveda educator, and that was. Um, kind of being taken from doing department store shows in Denver to the very tippy top of the industry in one moment. Even though I was an assistant, I barely did hair. Um, and I talked to Anna Wintower and crazy things that you're not supposed to do. I tapped her on the shoulder. I'm surprised I'm not in Guantanamo. But anyway, that was the moment when I got that bug. Um, and as far as, I don't know if I really am editorial. I mean, editorial technically is anything you do that's not an ad. So I guess we are editorial, but um, That's that our first like Charlie it. correction of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> but I did a lot of runway after that, and I went on to work with Guido <clears throat> for years before he was with Redkin, um, which is like the 1920s. And um, then I worked with Serge Normand also, so I had a long stint in New York. And I started doing shows on my own right away in 1998 after getting back from Milan because I found out you could pay, but you could only pay if they trusted you to do the show, so sponsor. I was like, well, yes. if they're paying, why can't I pay? I'll pay. You know, I had a salon, wow. I thought I had a lot of money at the time, I didn't, but I thought I did. And so we started giving all of our ad budgets to get shows in New York. And so one of the very first shows that I led on my own, I think it may have been the first show was Peter Som, who went on to be a really big designer. So that's how I got into it, by just knocking on doors in New York City and saying, I'm gonna be here. I just got back from Milan working for Eugene and I'll work for free. I don't care, I'll do whatever. And, you know, I never made money from that though. I yeah. never did. But it was one of the most inspired, it's just like something that fed my soul and it's just something that I love. I still yeah. love, love the idea of a fashion show. It's so exciting. You kind of get like a feeling like you're gonna faint when they go out, on, when they start walking, it's so fabulous, which is such a gay thing to say, but it's just true. <laughs> it's just true. Yeah, yeah. Oh my, I mean, it it really is like that industry is changing so much. I know it used to be like they, they actually paid for the stylist to do the shows and then it became like brands were paying and, and, and or you paid yourself, which I think is like, take notes, folks. Like it's the person who's like thinking outside of the box. Like you were like, I could pay, I'm a swan, you know, I, you know, I'm with Aveda. Um, what what are some of the big changes you've seen to the, let's call it the catwalk industry, fashion mm. shows, fashion weeks? Are they, cha is it still something people can get involved with or? It's actually easier than ever to get involved because so many brands are sponsoring shows. The thing that you have to be careful of is that everyone thinks like, you know, some girl from any town or guy will go and say, I'm walking New York Fashion Week, I'm walking Paris Fashion Week or local designers will say, I'm showing Paris. They're not. They're not on the real schedule. They're at a Holiday Inn somewhere, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's during Fashion Week, but it's not official Fashion Week. So what I would say is the proliferation, the, the, the pure numbers of shows happening every city and every city having a Fashion Week has cheapened it, um, has made the, the exclusivity and the titillation of a fashion show or a Fashion Week go away. So, you know, Tom Ford is now running the CFDA in New York, and he's really trying to reinvent New York Fashion Week, slim it down, change, change that. Um, and you know, who knows what's going on now with COVID. And you, you know, the, the, there's also this whole deal with online shopping and you know, their industry is in flux, just like every industry in our industry. Um, yeah. so I don't know where it's gonna all end up, but you still can, yes, definitely sponsor shows, you still can. Okay. And I think it's something every hairdresser should do. If you hate it, don't ever do it again, but at least try it. It's, it, it is, it's exciting to be around, even if you don't, aren't interested in the hair or you know nothing about the clothes. It just is fun and sexy and exciting and amazing. The way to build the craft, right? Yes. <laughs> so I, I, um, I know it's not your favorite thing to talk about. I know everybody has asked you, 
But the truth is, is like, we're, we're doing this live, we're posting it later. Everybody knows you from sheer genius as well. Like we oh, were, I don't mind talking about we it. were, we were nail it. biters. I mean, I, I saw that before we had met and I saw you in the Delta lounge with your husband <laughs> and I was like nervous to approach you at LAX. And I was just like, oh my God, God. I really want to walk up to him and like find out how in the, did he do those waves and like you had 30 seconds and it was like, she has to have long, perfect bit. And you like, I've never seen anyone pull it out on a reality show like you did. So mm. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask you the typical questions. Let's go behind the scenes. I didn't sleep dish. with anyone on the show. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing for me, like, because I worked on Project Runway All Stars. I remember. And, and what's funny is people don't, they don't ask that much about the behind the scenes. There are a lot of things like I had to get up at like, you know, three in the morning and sneak in and look at the dresses mm -hmm. because nobody, you weren't really allowed to see them. And then you were expected to like, produce magic hair after a 30 second mock consultation with the person. Yeah. And, and that could make or break the look. Yes. What were some of those moments that you had on Sheer Genius that you I could mean, share with us? You, you have, uh, to answer your question of how I did those things is because I did the things that I taught. So I knew that I could do it in 15 minutes because I'd done it in front of an audience, usually at a VEDA or yeah. at a Congress festival. And they would make us, you know, prepare to do that or on the International Beauty Show in New York, whatever. So that's how I did things quickly. I, I went back to my reserves of what I knew as an educator and how I could apply it to the challenge. The thing that I also found was a really big um, test for me was dealing with people that created challenges that were not hairdressers. Like when I had to teach my client how to do hair or when I had to do a dog's hair or when I had to do hair <laughs> blindfolded and try not to get too bitter, you know, cause I agreed to do this. I'm on a reality yeah. show, so I, I can't expect that it's gonna be like French Vogue. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> but ultimately it was the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. I loved it. Um, and when we were doing all the ads for it, we got driven through the gates of Paramount Pictures and there were sound stages waiting for us, people doing our hair and makeup and people just waiting around for us to do things and be silly and be funny. And it was incredibly <laughs> boring to come home. I mean, I was so happy to yeah. see Salvador, my husband, and that wasn't boring, but just, you know, you're on for literally a month away, no cell phone, no internet, no TV, no, no books, no magazines, nothing. Wow. being with these people and doing this show and so it is a very abrupt i mean i was flying from home from la to denver and they put me through vegas and phoenix and salt lake city to get home that's how glamorous it was once it was over <laughs> and they're like and you're done and i was dropped to the wing <laughs> you know one thing they did on project runway that was really like i was like oh because you always wonder how do you get these people, you know, talking about other people and maybe not such a positive light, like the confessional, if you will. And um, I learned that you're always on. I mean, you're always mic'd. They're listening to little nuances. And I, did you feel unsure, genius? Like they did a little pot stirring. It's of like, course. Tabitha Absolutely. said this, Charlie said this. Uh, was there any of that happening? Absolutely. Usually I didn't need to be prompted, but occasionally if they got bored, they'd say, go start shit with D or something. And I would, you know, it's like, watch this. <laughs> Nobody and, needs to stir your pot. <laughs> and I kept telling my friends, cause I, I'm really good friends with a few of the people from the show still. And Meredith, who was an educator at Aveda with me would get so wrapped up in the, in the hair and which I said is great. But at the I same time, <laughs> Remember who? Hi, Tabitha. Uh, that's we I love Tabitha. you, Tabitha. That was amazing meeting Tabitha. It was uh, you know? I we love, love that you today. left, Tabitha. <laughs> I wanted her to. I, I just loved Tabitha from the minute I met her and saw her on the show. So anyway, yeah. that was one good thing about it. And meeting Jacqueline Smith was amazing. I mean, there's nothing bad about it. I loved yeah. it. It was yeah. fantastic. I still it, dream about it. Like I'm still on the show and then I wake up and I'm like, oh, that, that was 10 years ago or longer. No, it was like 13 years ago. Maybe, maybe it's time for you and Tabitha to do something again. <laughs> Listen, it, I would be there in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs>
We're so glad you're watching, Tabitha. So, you know, Tabitha's actually, my next topic, Tabitha's actually been our host not once but twice for Naha. And, um, you know, sorry. I was a host once. <laughs> I know, I know. And a fantastic one. <laughs> <laughs> And and you are Sally Field, as we announced this year. Um, right. So I thought a lot of people who are listening, they're so curious about, Tabitha, I'm going to take you up on that. I'm reaching out to you, Tabitha. Tabitha said any time about the show. So I'm going to help you guys produce that. <laughs> Don't tease. <laughs> no teasing here. We're, we're getting on a sidebar like after this. The three of you, we're, get, we're getting on. Um, and uh, Tabitha, we'd love to have you on the show anytime. So let's let's talk about Naha because there's a lot going on right now and talking about shoots and and I'd like to preface it with you know we announced at the show that we have changed the rules so now your work can be submitted to other competitions so it's not this giant expense where you're just you're spending these thousands and thousands of dollars to to you know to just have work that that can go in one place I'll I'll touch more on that later but I think I think it's important that we sort of um, talk through, like, what are some things people can do to prepare for entering Naha or any competition for that matter? I think sitting by yourself, uh, you can have wine or pot or whatever, but don't be wasted. Um, and just describe your style. Uh, what, what do I do? Am I a colorist? Am I avant-garde? Am I a classic updo person? Am I a technical hair cutter? And then select your categories that you might want to enter based on that. What do you, and then also, if, if I were to enter this, what do I want out of this? Why am I entering it? Do I want to be the best wedding you know, person in Denver? And then I want to promote that. And so if I win an award, it directly correlates to what I do. That's yeah. the, I think that's the, the biggest thing that people forget about when they enter a contest. Because I've had so many people win Naha and then hit me up and be like, I thought that I was going to have this opportunity or that. I thought this was going to happen. I thought they were going to send up, somebody was going to send a private jet and I'd be hanging out with, I don't know, you know, <laughs> Billie Eilish. I don't, doing coke somewhere. I don't know. I mean, but. She was at PBA. They, she did the uh, City of Hope event the year before. I remember. Can't I remember. afford her now, I but she there. was there. That's amazing. <laughs> Um, I saw Aretha Franklin at that. City of Hope is no joke. That's amazing. No joke. I mean, no City joke. of Hope brings it. Who That's says a cost. don't have money. <laughs> exactly. I don't. I we no can't money. afford. Yeah, it's expensive, but it goes to a good cause. So um, back to, back to Naha. Back to Naha. Uh, yes, and then so also I would say practice, practice, practice your looks on mannequins and photograph them with your phone so that you can start to get a sense before you ever shoot them for the contest what angles you like, what you're trying to show, the lines that you want to create. Um, and then the third thing that I would say that's one of the most valuable things that people ask me is how do I get started and how do I put together a collection and what I've always done. This is a little, I, I used to say tear sheets for magazines. Now I would say Pinterest or just Google whatever um, fashion magazine, online magazines you read, whatever resources that you use to get inspiration that you look at for beauty every day, start putting them in albums. Yeah. And then what the reason I like tear sheets particularly is what I would do is save them in notebooks and throw them on the ground and make a storyboard of things that I like this kind of photograph. I like this makeup. I love this wardrobe. I love these poses. And then it a story reveals itself to you without you even having to try and you've already created it because it's everything you already like because you picked it. And so then you can plug that into the looks that you want to do. It really is something I learned from Ray Chevello, and it, you can do it with a team too. So it's very democratic in terms of everyone knows that their ideas are in it. Um, it's a it's a genius way to uh, storyboard without really trying. So you're saying don't because uh, we're all digital now, right? Like it's phone, mm -hmm. phone, phone. But it, I hear you saying there's a little pulp involved. Like grab a really good book or magazine and rip it out and kind of create a space where you're being you super can, creative or? You can totally do it with your phone. I just physically like to have pieces of paper me that too, I'm, moving, me too. Around, that I'm yeah. moving around on the floor. Yeah. And making rows. I like this kind of photograph, one, two, three, four, five. I like this, but you can do that in albums on your phone. It's just, yeah. I mean, you don't have to do it. I personally just like the tactile and moving it physically around yeah. like a storyboard on the wall, you know, with 
with a tag board or something. I'm with you. I'm with you on that completely. So to touch on the cost of doing a competition shoot or, or the cost of doing a shoot for your salon, right? Like people are going to be getting back to work soon and hopefully, and, you know, maybe they could use this time to shoot, you know, maybe there's someone who's been separated long enough and they can come together and they could do a shoot for their salon to have imagery or so forth or to enter a competition. My point is, is there anything we can do on a budget to get Naha quality imagery? I, and I, I know it's a leading question because I've seen what you've done with an iPhone mm -hmm. and I told you it was my favorite collection. Thank so I, I, how would you go about like, I'm gonna do something on my phone? You can definitely do it on your phone. The thing is, you just need to, uh, I, I would use natural light, practice with natural light. Um, and if we go, I did the shoot that you like, I did completely for free, except I think I spent $100 on the wardrobe because my car was getting fixed and I was bored. So I went to the mall and there was a JCPenney there and I hadn't been in one forever. And I went to the clearance and I found these outfits for $100. Anyway, that, <laughs> I spent $100 on the shoot. So models that you know have beautiful bone structure um that photograph well use your natural light um practice with the editing that you can do on your phone that's not an app because anytime you take a picture out of the app or and i'm sorry out of your phone into an app you're going to reduce the um resolution of it okay. so natural light is, is is easiest but you can practice with one light a hair light on top to the side just practice before you start it. But your iPhone, um, iPhone is amazing. Um, and maybe have some photos that you love and try to emulate those before you ever get to shoot day. If you're gonna shoot it yourself on a phone, say, okay, yeah. I love this really contrasty black and white thing. Let me try this first with a client and just play. Okay. Um, so what if I mean, they're you not you? What if they're not you? Here's what I think I'm leading to. How do you know when the work is good enough how do you know when it's ready to submit when it's ready to print what are the things you're looking at whether it was shot on an iphone or whether it was you know we're calling up ronson and we're spending gobs of money how do you know that that shot is ready or uh, right well i can't i can only speak for myself because i have been a judge at naha and for me whether i'm judging another um, like I've judged the Hairbrand Awards many times. I've judged the Spanish Hairdressing Awards. I've judged things for many manufacturing uh, contests. And what I always look for is something that immediately jumps off the screen at me and says, wow. And yeah. then I go in and dissect it for technical details and you know things that I can tear it apart on. But, uh, and when I'm shooting, I just have a feeling it's like being in love. You just know yeah. it just hits you at that minute. You're like, that's the shot. Um, and I don't stop shooting until I feel that. I got it. So we had a question and I, I didn't see who. By the way, folks, if you have a question, put all questions, click on the question mark symbol at the bottom, just past the comment box, because the comments sort of slip by me and I'm sorry I'm new to this. If you put them in the question box, I'll get them for sure. Um, I did happen to see a comment go, how, how do you find the models? I find that the models, especially, you know, working with a brand, sometimes the models and the rights to models and that can be one of the biggest parts of the entire budget. Um, any tips and tricks for uh, models? It used to be, I would say, well, for me, what I have been doing is uh, any fashion weeks I was working on or in the city, fashion shows, local fashion shows, whatever, um, local, uh, social media boards for models and photographers that want to shoot, um, that have wild hair, that, you know, like to do something different. Um, and, but I also think it's hard to find girls with great long hair. So I'm always looking for girls that don't want to do a thing to their hair too. I love the wildest and the most conservative is long, like long, pristine, gorgeous hair. Yeah. Um, I love it. You know, I'm always trying to find every ethnicity of model in Colorado, you know, it's like you can't go outside without seeing 15 Latinas and then I want a Latina for a shoot and I can't find her. Yeah. So I always, what I would suggest, the easiest way is hashtag whatever city you in, you live in model. Denver model, San Francisco model, New York model, and then whatever comes up and look at them 
uh, and see and start talking to them online and see and then maybe set up a, a test shoot or give them a free haircut in advance and see if you like them. Because one of the most the most important things to me when choosing my models, which is I love to have a, a live casting if I can, because it's sort of like a dance and a seduction. I need to like the people I'm working with. If the model and I don't hit it off right away, um, I mean, that, that makes me sound terrible. But no, I, I get I, it. If they're asking me when I first got laid and asking me what my mom looks like and asking me when I've started doing hair and asking me a million questions in the casting, I'm like, you're going to drive me crazy on set. You're like, bye I bye. can't. I can't. And it's not that I want a geisha. I want people with, I don't want them <laughs> submissive, but I, I just need to work. You're like, right? I need like, to focus. Yeah, because yeah, like, I think sometimes they don't realize that we are so, when we're shooting, we're like, we're looking at the monitor. We're looking at the wardrobe from the last look. We're, we're you know, we're, we're bup, 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 or the next look, rather. So there's a lot going on in our mind. Charlie, you, you said something because, and, and to anyone who's watching, who was coming to our New York event, you know, we're, we're, we're planning on when to move things around. Yeah. And, and we're so sorry that we had to um, cancel that event, but we plan on staying very close to Charlie and figuring something out. You said something to me about, about quality of hair. And I think that a lot of us know what that is, but what exact qualities in the hair are you looking for? We all know good hair, but what does good hair mean? Is it, is it curly? Do your fingers go through it easily? Is it, what does that mean exactly? Like, what are some things people can do quickly to know if that hair's gonna behave? I wanna know this personally from your scale. Uh, to know that that's going to not frizz up and it's not going to go flat and it's going to lay really nice for them. Uh, d well, as far as what's good hair in a photo, um, I think a graphic line. Um, if you're going to do smooth curls, make sure that it looks like glass. If you're going to do um, tousled hair, it needs to be tousled, but not in a in such a chaotic way that it looked like not, that there was no hairdresser there. Right. Um, spontaneous, but wonderful. Um, skilled as like, okay, that hair's a mess, but I could tell she spent three hours curling it and then tore it up. Something right. like that. Um, <laughs> and it's, I guess what I would say is good hair um, reveals a classical skill, a knowledge of the basic tenets of hairdressing. If it's a phenomenal one length haircut, you know, it, it's not a motorcycle helmet. It, it just looks like amazing hair in a sheet that's cut off perfectly like it was done by a computer. Yeah. Not like it was sprayed to death, for instance. That would be an example. Okay. Or, um, you know, you just don't want to see, it, it should look effortless too, I guess. And yeah. That's subjective. Would you lean but. toward thicker or finer? Mm. which would it you really, choose because that's really often a big yeah. It, it, yeah if if you want if you want like a glassy smooth fabulous bob for instance more fine hair not necessarily thin but it could go towards the thin side if you want voluminous gorgeous hair that you're going to put over a wig piece or a wrap big thick full hair is great you that just need to know that like you can this, handle right? it right like right. yeah and you need to know that you can handle it and, and budget your time for that like uh, one of my favorite picture lately that I've done is the picture that's the cover sheet on my, or the opening page of my, the homepage of my website. And that was a comb out that took 45 minutes and it took an hour and a half to crimp. She had so much hair, but it's all her hair. There's no extensions yeah. in it. Yeah. And she was like, to me, an alien. I was like, oh my God, she's like <laughs> Candace Bergen in the sixties meets, you know, today. I, mean, I love it. Anna asked, what is avant-garde to you? What does it mean to you? You are, and thank, thankfully, you are on our task force for Naha, and you've been there for years. And as the chairman of Naha, I thank you for that. And we talk about this a lot, but let's share. What, what does avant-garde mean to you? Avant-garde. Without being too insulting to anybody. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, avant-garde to me, and I think to all the people that are known for it, is hair that could not really be worn down the street in a normal way. Like, it would be very uh, attention getting if you wore it to the grocery store. It's, it's, it's an art form of hair on the head. It's something that is 
Well, well, or it could be clothing, or it could be music. It's not accessible to the norm. Yeah. Like Bjork doing an album where it's like, Salvador describes, he hates Bjork, I love Bjork. He describes it as like, eh, eh, ah, eh, like a <laughs> horrible sound. Um, that's avant-garde. It's like not the yeah. norm, right? Yeah. Um, Alexander McQueen doing a trash can around, the, uh, or a um, trash bag around the head with Coke cans. cans. That's avant-garde. It's not something you would normally do. So um, avant-garde is not like curly hair that's slightly teased out or something. And that it's might be also sexy. not a ship on top of your head, right? Yeah, like, that is fantasy. That's, that's fantasy. fantasy, yeah. Which is also amazing. But It's incredible. Yes, but I, I think it's different. OK, before we get into this or that, quickly, I want to um, Tell me what the Beauty Underground is. What, mm. Like, because you have done, I mean, you have your own awards for, you know, for the Denver area. You, you have so many things you do, but I think one of the most interesting things you've ever done is, is Beauty Underground. Can you tell us about that? Uh, Beauty Underground started as a, um, a jam band of hairdressers that I've known forever and adored. Um, that just and wanted who's to... in who's in the Beauty Underground? Can we the original we say... people in the Beauty Underground are people that I uh, that I worked with forever, like Katie Nielsen from Scruples, Sharina Hansen, who uh, was my assistant in the 1920s. I turned her into a vampire. Um, <laughs> we worked at Aveda forever in Fashion Week. Jill Lights from Aveda. I mean, so, oh my God, she's gonna kill me. Jill Lights <laughs> from Redken. Jill Lights is not whoop, from Aveda. Whoop, oh my whoop, God. Whoop. <laughs> And, and it's uh, not about it's, brands uh, right now, right? It's about- uh, yeah, just... Too many manufacturers. Yeah. Um, a couple other people. Um, and we just were like, we just want to do things on our own terms. And so we're like, we'll do our own collections. We'll do our own stage shows and we'll do our own classes and whatever. And it doesn't matter what brands we work for. Lisa Van from Aveda. That's what I meant to say. Lisa Van, Aveda, Jill Lights, Redkin. They're both going to kill me. She's with Euphoria now. Or, uh, <laughs> ugh, whatever yeah. with your manufacturers, they know who they're with. Um, but and you uh, have George and you have you have George so many Eldredi people. came on, Ruth Roach came on. We have international members like uh, Marlo Steeman from Canada now. Paul Deanna Lynn Teal. Deanna Lynn Teal, Rockstar. Love you, Deanna I mean, Lynn. She's worked for all kinds of manufacturers. <laughs> anyway, so what it is, is it's a conglomeration consortium. That's my word of the day. Consortium Whoa. of hairdressers that just come together to have fun and do amazing projects, but also we feel like we want to advocate for hairdressers. We want them to know that they are the master of their own destiny. They are the master of their career because we have found that people get bogged down in all kinds of different influences and really it's up to you. And that's why we all became hairdressers. I became a hairdresser because I hate people telling me what to do. I wanna decide what I'm gonna do. Even if I fail, which I have many times. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's my decision. It's my failure, you know? I agree. So we, we advocate for hairdressers to empower themselves. Styled by Margot is asking you, do you have any advice for stylists who just started out? Surround your, uh, if you just got out of beauty school, go be an assistant for at least two years at a fine salon. Um, work for a manufacturer for at least two years to get yourself out there and know the industry, read your trade magazines, uh, stock your idols without getting restraining orders like were put out on me. Um, and- Don't tell me Guido gave you a restraining order. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure he ever knew my name after three years, he just called me doll. So doll. I'm like, at least he knows, he knows me. <laughs> but um, awesome. my, last, my last piece of advice for someone starting out is have three-year goals, five-year goals, and fantasy ultimate wildest dream goals. They can change, but make sure you write them down because you can't get to where you're going if you don't know where you want to go. And that sounds so self-helpy and I hate self-help. <laughs> um, I hate it, but it's just the truth. If you don't know where you're going, no one else can help you get there either. Like, because Antoinette, when I was working under her at Aveda, asked me, what do you want? And I luckily, luckily had three very finite things that I wanted. Um, because you never know when a powerful person is gonna ask you that question and you wanna have an answer. 
I'm with you. We got um, we got a question. I didn't see the name. Put your questions in the question box with the question mark, and I'll see your name. Because I can't read that fast. And Charlie's amazing, and there's lots of info coming. They're asking when the next Beauty Underground magazine is coming out. Well, it was supposed to come out now, but. I am I am on a scorched earth but scorched earth budget with my sister who is my um, bookkeeper and my soulmate. Not I mean uh, as much as my husband and she's like you cannot spend a dime. So that's gonna come out as soon as I can, which is probably the summer. Okay. It's in the can. It's ready to go. David David Rasa, my co artistic director, Katie Nielsen. We went shot things in Morocco. We shot things in Spain again. Amazing. We have An um, Angelo Seminera. We have Mozilla Palmer. We have all these shoots. But I just, I'm not spending money right now. So it's going to come think, out when I can. Yeah. I think it, it's, you know, the, probably the first time in your life you're being conservative. <laughs> it's like, oh, God. Yeah. Charlie the conservative. So With money. <laughs> <laughs> with money, exactly. Never the other. <laughs> so, um, so now is the time of of my show where I like to just have some fun. There will be different games on MSC TV. Um, we thought we would play this or that with you, Charlie. So if you feel okay. like being a good sport, I'm going to throw some this okay. or that at you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So West Coast or East Coast? West Coast. Oh, wow. That's surprising. Yay. My coast. Swim trunks or Speedo? Swim trunks. Okay. Scissor or comb? Huh? At least on me. On okay. these from friends. <laughs> okay. On them, Speedo is fine. Scissor over comb or clippers? Scissor over comb always. Vaseline or lotion? I guess Vaseline sounds hotter. I like the smell when it gets hot. Hot or cold? Uh, cold. Uh, weather, cold. Uh, as long as it's not hot. your Vaseline. <laughs> yes. Vaseline can be hot as long as it doesn't burn me. <laughs> Cutting or styling? Oh, that's hard. Styling. Styling. Botox or natural? Restylane. Okay. <laughs> My next question, fillers <laughs> or facials? I think we know the answer. <laughs> yes, fillers. Fillers, fillers bro. Truth or dare? Mm. Truth. I think you're very truthy. Pop or indie? Mm, indie. Punk or grunge? Punk. I like both though. For your toilet paper, if you can get some, <laughs> <laughs> are you over or under? Oh, I guess under, yeah. Under. I'm under too. I, I really <laughs> believe that's the right way. Who wants to see it messy on top? Um, chunky or smooth? Smooth. Sneakers or heels? Heels. Of course. Middle yes. part or side part? Side part. Rollers or curling iron? Curling iron. Early bird or night owl? Night owl, for sure. Freckles or dimples? Freckles. <laughs> so hot. If you have freckles, message me. Spontaneous or a planner? <sighs> That's hard. Uh, planner. Round brush or flat brush? Round brush. And finally, the most important, Madonna or Deborah Harry? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I knew it was hurts dead. Me. <laughs> uh, Madonna. I'm sorry. Madonna. Uh, I love her. It's I like, put it's you you love. It was you evil. Can't do Sophie's choice. It was, that was Sophie's evil. Choice. <laughs> it was evil. Charlie, I want to thank you so much for hanging out with us today. This was so amazing. Uh, folks, we're going to be posting this. If your friends missed this, Tabitha Coffee joined in and like, promised us she would do something with Charlie. I'm going to produce that. I'm going to I'm going to take them up on their offer to be together again. So look for that. We are we are we are getting on the phone soon. Charlie, thank you so much for joining us. Um any final words of wisdom for for our friends out there? 
I don't know if it's wisdom. I just think that what I want to say to everybody right now is hang in there. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm terrified. We're all terrified. And we're, we are all in the same boat. It's happening to everybody. And it's easy to think it's just happening to you. Um, but it's happening to all of us. So uh, I love you hairdressers. And if you're sad or lonely or scared, message me. I have nothing to do but talk to you. And I love you guys. We love you too, Charlie. Thank, thank you so you. much. And thank you, everyone. This has been amazing. We're going to have these two to three times a week. So look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Charlie. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <love> you. <laughs>